2 Timothy chapter number 1, verses 8 and 9. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thy partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. I'm going to announce tonight that whether you know it or not, whether you believe it or not, I am a Christian. I'm one of them independent, fundamental, Bible-believing, King James Bible only, walk right, keep it tight, spit wide, and drink pride. I believe the Word of God, every word of it from... I I believe the maps and the concordance hallelujah I'm one of them believes that it ought to be the straight and narrow I'm one of them believes we ought to live just by what God said we ought not be caught up in this world but we ought to be caught up in that world I, matter of fact I told a fella that the kingdom of God was inside of me I'm going to spend more time living in this kingdom instead of this kingdom around us I believe that I've said all of that so you'll realize that when Christian somebody says uh, I'm a Christian it doesn't mean all of that we've watered it down corrupted it compromised it to a Christian means about anything that anybody decides that it means but that's not what it means in the Bible Paul is writing to his son uh, if you will in the ministry and he's telling him in a day when Christianity is frowned upon uh, when it is persecuted when most are trying to stamp it out and nobody wants to stand for it. He's telling Timothy to be the Christian. He's not telling him to mingle in with the world. He's not telling him to back down, to water it down or to compromise it. But he's telling him to be the Christian in a day when the churches of the Lord Jesus Christ are doing anything to draw a crowd or making anything Christianity. i tell you what the world needs. We don't need another watered down church we don't need a watered down gospel we don't need a watered down Bible we don't need watered down Christians what we need in these last days is what Paul encouraged Timothy to be and he was saying to Timothy be the Christian and for just a few minutes from these verses tonight I want to give you that thought on be I want to encourage you and exhort you to be the Christian. First of all he tells Timothy if we're going to be the Christian there is a commitment to being the Christian. You just don't come jump in, jump out, go to heaven when you die. Hallelujah. There's a commitment to being the Christian. Watch what he says in verse 8. He said be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of the Lord. There is a commitment to the testimony of the Lord. See we love to tell how the Lord loved us and thank God that he did but we've left off that he is a righteous and a holy and a just God. The Bible said that the Lord does not take any pleasure in the death of the wicked. Your biggest enemy dies you may take a little pleasure in it but God God doesn't take pleasure when his worst enemy dies but it doesn't change the fact that the wicked shall be turned into hell and the nations that forget God. God is loving. God is full of grace and mercy and truth but he is righteous and holy and I won't water it down. I won't back down with it. I made a commitment to preach Jesus everywhere I went. The full Jesus. The whole Jesus. Jesus plus nothing and Jesus minus nothing and to be a real Christian in these last days you'll have to make a commitment to the testimony of the Lord Jesus but it doesn't stop there he says be not thou, thou therefore ashamed of the Lord of the testimony of the Lord watch what he said nor of me his prisoner let me hit this wait a minute Paul you're not his prisoner you're the prisoner of Rome 
You're the prisoner of Nero. See, Paul didn't have it confused. Paul didn't think that Nero had power over the Lord he served. He didn't think Rome had power over the Lord he served. He said, the only reason they got me locked down here in this dungeon is because that's what the Lord Jesus wanted in my life. And he told Timothy, be not ashamed of the testimony of the Lord, but be not ashamed of the team, if you will, of the Lord. I don't know about about you but I'm proud of my pastor and I'm going to stand with him every man of God that mounts the pulpit skins back an old King James Bible and preaches thus saith the Lord I'm with him I know we're dinosaurs I know we're out of the times I know it's a throwback and we're not in with the modern generation but I got news for you we may look like the Egyptian of the Israelites did in Egypt when there's a down there mashing around in mud pits they they didn't look like the people of God. They looked like a bunch of old broke down slaves uh, turning mud into bricks. But uh, <clears throat> Moses walked out there when he come of years and he looked and said, this ain't my people, that's my people. And I'm saying these watered down versions, that's not my people. These compromisers, that's not my people. I'm going to stand with those that stand with the Lord. I'm going to stay with them. I started with them. And by the good grace of God, I'm going to finish with them. He said, if you're going to be the Christian, there is a commitment. Hang on, buckle up. This part we don't like. He said, if you're going to be the Christian, there's a cost. <laughs> now watch what he says. Verse number eight. He says, Be not ashamed, therefore, of the testimony of our Lord, nor me his prisoner. But be thou, big Bible word here, partaker of the afflictions of the gospel. Now, that word partaker means that uh, we are to share in common. He tells Timothy, don't hide uh, when you're being abused for the gospel. Don't run and hide. Don't be ashamed of it when they're making fun of you for believing what that book says and standing on what that book says. Matter of fact, Jesus said, when they revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you, you know what the Lord said do he said rejoice and be exceeding glad not just be glad that word exceeding in the uh, weaver's country dictionary means going way past he said when they make fun of you when they ridicule you and persecute you and lie on you he said don't swell up and get mad he said rejoice and go way past being glad for great is your reward in heaven there is a cause don't shy away don't be timid and bad for don't back down for being afflicted for the gospel he said be partakers share it in common if they're afflicting me they ought to be afflicting you if they're talking about your pastor they ought to be talking about you matter of fact let me just stop right here and say this I ain't going to put up with you talking about my pastor I ain't going to sit around the barber shop hang out at the men's club uh, and let you run down my church I ain't going to stand for it I'm going to get right in the middle of it and be partaker in the afflictions of the gospel but not only do we share in this, but we suffer in the afflictions of the gospel. Now the suffering he's talking about here are not our ailments. It is not our pain. It is not the situations of life. What Paul is talking about here is suffering for the gospel's sake. Now let me just point out in this day in which I live and travel and preach, I'm not suffering too much for the facts of the gospel. Most Baptist churches that I'm in or have been in, we all believe the facts of the gospel. Let me give them to you. That Jesus died according to the scriptures, was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Nobody's really persecuting me for preaching the death, burial, and the resurrection. Where we're falling out with, uh, where I'm being a, a, a partaker of the afflictions, is I believe there's more than just the facts of the gospel taught in our Bible, but there's the fruits of the gospel taught in our 
our Bible. Folk get saved don't live the same after they get saved. They don't dress the same. They don't act the same. They don't go to the same places. They don't talk the same. They don't even think the same. God makes a change in you immediately. If you receive the facts of the gospel, then there will be fruits of the gospel in your life. I'm going to give you one. When I first say it, you won't say amen to it, but stay with me. We've got this push now in some of these compromising churches where they say, well, what we need to get back to is we need to put our focus on getting folks saved. Now, the first thing wrong with that, it sounds good, don't it, that the church ought to focus on, let me just go ahead and hit something because he might not ever invite me back anyway. When we have revival meeting, if somebody gets saved this week, that ain't what it's all about. Hallelujah. That's not what it's all about. And the church is not just all about getting folks saved because the commission of the Lord is one commission, but it's two pronged. It is to win the lost and it is to disciple the newborn babes in Christ. You can't fulfill the commission of the Lord Jesus by doing one part of it. We as the church must do both parts and what we're having today is they want to get them saved which means they want them to pray a prayer or they want them to raise their hand or they want them to sign a card and baptize them and put them on the roll of the church and just come one hour on Sunday morning live like you want to if you got something else go do it if you don't want to come just I ain't talking about folk can't come I'm talking about if you don't want to come just watch the replay send your money in and do all of that and well, that's what we ought to focus on we ought not to focus on standards and growth and uh, convictions and Bible doctrines. Oh God, don't preach any doctrine. Just talk about the death, bear on the resurrection. Well, you can't preach the gospel and not preach the whole Bible. Hallelujah. And that's where I am suffering the afflictions of the gospel. But guess what? I'm going to preach it just like God wrote it because for 31 years, that's the way I've been trying to do it. I'm going to preach doctrine. I'm going to preach stuff you believe and stuff you might not believe if it's in this Bible. I'm going to do a little bit of it tonight. Hallelujah. So buckle up. But we, there is a cost to being the Christian. There's a cost. Matter of fact, Jesus talked about it. if you ain't ready to pay the cost, I'll just go ahead and tell you. It ain't going to be too much for you. It ain't going to be too good for you. You'll just flop around like a fish out of water. You better sit down and count the cost because if you go all in with the Lord Jesus, I'm telling you, he'll separate some of your friends. Uh, he may change your job. Uh, he may change your career. Uh, he may put you in doing something you never thought you'd be doing because there is a cost to being the Christian. Here's the message tonight. Not only is there commitment, not only is there a cost, but there's a confidence in being the Christian. I am confident that he saved me. Look what he said in verse 9. Who hath saved us? <laughs> I can take you to the place. I can tell you about the time. I can take you to the place where the Lord saved me by his wonderful grace. I may not tell you how, and I may not know all the why, but I'll shout all about it in the by and by. I sat in six pews back on the preacher's right hand side, and the Holy Ghost came and got me. They didn't get me by raising my hand. They didn't tell some sob story that scared me. I'm going to go a little farther and tell you the truth. I didn't get saved because I was scared I was going to go to hell. I got saved because I realized that Jesus loved me. It was the goodness of God that led me to repentance. That's why nobody had to help me. Hallelujah. I was the least loved child of my parents. I didn't feel like when I was young nobody loved me like they ought to. And so when I found out, when God opened my eyes, when I really saw that he loved me, I kicked pocketbooks out of the way, stepped over legs, uh, dove in an old-fashioned altar, I didn't pray a sinner's prayer. Somebody said, you prayed the sinner's prayer? I didn't know a sinner had a prayer. I didn't go up an Ephesian expressway through a, up a Romans road or through a Philippian jail. I just called on him. I don't even remember what exactly I said, but I believed on him and he birthed me into his family. Now I'm going to go ahead and tell you, I ain't never walked the floor one night and thought I was lost. I ain't never had to call the pastor to pray for me and thought I was lost, but 
because God done something in me that day that the devil ain't been able to shake. You can preach. They'll say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, uh, did we not do this and do that? And he says, depart from me. That won't shake me one bit because I settled it. Hallelujah. The old account is settled. I settled it long ago. It settled then. It settled now. It'll be settled throughout all eternity. He saved me. He saved me. I'm confident. I don't know a lot of things, but one thing I know, I'm saved. Hallelujah. I'm going to just go ahead and throw this in. Not only am I saved, I'm satisfied. <laughs> I got more than I'll ever need when I got Jesus. Have you ever had somebody tell you, well, if you got Jesus, you got all you need. Well, that's true. But that ain't all the truth. Because if you got Jesus, you don't just have all you need. You don't just have enough. You have more than enough. Matter of fact, you have more than more than enough. I'll give you one example of it. He told Abraham in Genesis 15, I am thy exceeding great reward. It'd been enough if he had said, I am thy reward. When it's all settled, you're going to get me. That'd been enough for me. But God didn't stop it enough. He didn't just say, I'm your great, big, mega reward. A great reward. Man, that'd been more than enough if he's my great reward. But he used that word exceeding. I'm going, when you get to great reward, he said, I'm going way past that. He's more than more than enough. Hallelujah. And he saved me. He saved me. I don't want the world. They ruined me. They lied to me. They abused me. But he loved me. And he saved me. He saved me. I'm confident. He saved me. What's this? Comma. And I'm going to hit that and but I'm going to wait a little later to get it. And this is a different thought. He saved us and called us with the Holy Ghost. Now, some commentators say they're still talking about salvation. But I asked my school teacher wife if it had comma and was it not a different thought. See, not only did he save us, here's that two prong about to jump out at you. He saved me and he called me. That call that he called me with was a summons. Yeah. Now, being a former police officer, I'd get some papers had your name on it. I'd come down there and knock on your door. The court would be subpoenaing you. I'd knock and ask, was you, you come to the door? I'd say, is your name? And you'd say, yeah. I'd hand you those papers and say, you are duly served. When he saved you, he duly served you. He summons you to a holy, watch it, it says, an holy calling, not a human calling, uh, not a hellish calling. Uh, he really summons us to a holy life, to something, let me put it this way, he summons me. He called me to something, to something that's bigger than I am. Hallelujah. I'm not called for the mundane. I'm not called for the worldly. Hallelujah. He called me for something that's bigger than me. That's bigger than this world. That's bigger than sin. That's bigger than self. It's a holy calling. Only way it could have been a holy calling, it came from a holy caller. Hallelujah. He called me with a holy calling. He expects not only that I'm saved I ought to be confident that I'm saved but I'm confident that I'm summoned to a holy life. I'll live different. I'll talk different. I'll act different. I'll be different. Good. Good. The reason I talk different and act different and is because I am different. It's not just that I turned over a new leaf, pulled myself up by the bootstrap, but I'm brand spanking new. Let me help somebody here that's beating himself up about something happened 35 years ago and they ain't got over it and they're still in the prayer closet trying to repent of it. God doesn't know what you're talking about because the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanseth us from all. I said it said cleanseth us from all. It said a double l all sins. So quit living back there. You're trying to repent for what you did before you got saved you ain't even that person anymore when God saved me he killed that old man circumcised him away from me set us apart made me brand spanking new birthed me to a new life when some of them friends come up and say oh I remember when we was growing up I remember when you used to I said well hang on to that since God let it go I let it go cause you're talking about somebody I ain't no more I may look the same I may sound the same but I'm not that guy you knew wait Lord to God I don't know 
if that's a help in you, but it's a help in me tonight to know that I've been summoned to a holy calling. I'm confident he saved me. I'm confident he summons me. I'm confident he supplied me. Now watch what he says. Verse 9. Who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, comma, not according to our works. He said, uh, I didn't go by your works. I didn't choose you, if you will, save you and call you because of what you could do. <laughs> said, but what's this now? According, not according to, to our works well if he didn't call us save us and call us according to our works what did he save us and call us according I'm glad you asked Paul says according to his purpose here it is again and grace I'm sure that he supplied me with a purpose <laughs> see I don't have to search for a purpose in life cause God already gave me one and whatever that purpose is in my life, what's this? He said he called me, not according to my works. He didn't call me because I had talents and gifts and charisma. He didn't call me because I draw a crowd. You see, I can't. He didn't call me because I've got some magnetic personality or I'm some great speaker. He didn't call me according to all of that. He called me according to his own purpose. What's this? And grace. Now, you probably heard me tell this. I tell it everywhere. I didn't learn what that and is from my school teacher wife. I learned it on Saturday morning. When I was a kid, young folk, cartoons only came on on Saturday morning. <laughs> right before Fat Albert and Mid-Atlantic Wrestling. <laughs> and there was, a, <laughs> there was a cartoon short would come on, have a train engine backing up, hooking up to train cars. And a female voice had come on and say, Conjunction, junction. What's your function? And a male voice had come back and say, Hooking up words and phrases and clauses. Later in the song, he'd say, And making them run right. And the first and biggest conjunction on that cartoon was this word and. So what the Bible does here, what the Holy Ghost does through Paul the Apostle is he links up, he backs, if you will, the engine of his purpose and hooks it to the boxcar of his grace. So you ain't got to spend all your time praying for God's grace to accomplish God's purpose in your life because when he called you to that purpose he hooked grace to he hooked grace to the purpose he not only gave me a purpose but he gave me his grace so I could endure the purpose so I could enjoy the purpose so I could enlist in the purpose so I could be engulfed in the purpose this purpose that he called me to he hooked grace with it so every time I take off for the purpose grace is falling right along with me grace is a hook to my purpose Purpose. Not according to my works. No wonder I'm satisfied with it. But according to his own purpose and grace. Don't miss that. Oh God, I need grace for your purpose. No. He already gave you grace for his purpose. <laughs> Not according, I'm confident that he didn't call me according to my works but according to his purpose. And, thank God for that conjunction, grace. What's this? <laughs> Gonna get better. Called me according to his own purpose and grace. Watch your Bible. You'll learn a lot if you watch your Bible. Which was given. Now let's just stop and think. I'm not the sharpest bulb, on the, the brightest bulb on the porch or the sharpest tool in the shed. But I know what given means. Yeah. Means I didn't have anything to do with it. He just came along and said, I've got it. I want you to have it. Here it is. According to his own purpose and grace, which was given me. Now, how was it given me? Let's see. In Christ 
Jesus. So he not only called me not according to my works, but he didn't call me according to my will. Because <laughs> he gave me his purpose and grace. He didn't call me according to my worth. Because he didn't do it in me. He said, got nothing to do with you, Sidney. You ain't got the right works. You ain't got the right will. You ain't got the right worth. But I know the one that does. And I'm going to give you my purpose and grace. I'm going to give it to you in the one that's worthy, Christ Jesus. See, what I'm trying to get to is everything that we have as a Christian, we have in Christ Jesus. Now, we realize that when we got saved, that God came to live, that Christ lives in us. Sometimes we forget that when God put Christ in me, he also put me in Christ. So I'm righteous, not because I preach, not because I believed on the Lord, not because I got saved. I'm righteous because I'm clothed in his righteousness. I'm declared righteous in Christ. You know what my righteousness is today? Filthy rags. But I ain't in Sydney because he didn't do it according to my works. He didn't do it according to my will. He didn't ask me what I wanted to do. He said, I got a purpose for you and I'm going to give you grace. Uh, give it to you in Christ Jesus because he's worthy. You're unworthy, but I'm going to give it to you in him. Hallelujah. When I got in him, I got promoted. Hallelujah. I got a pr promotion, if you will. I got exalted. I got lifted up. I got brought up onto a new you walk around with your lip pooched out and whine about woe is me and I'm so down and I'm so bad and I'm so nah I ain't doing that cause I ain't living in the kingdom out here I'm gonna live in the kingdom in here I'm gonna live in the kingdom I'm in in Christ everything I have is in Christ Jesus do you know this that I did not die on the cross but God gave me credit for it How? In Christ Jesus. I didn't take the lashes that were mine. I told you last night, God, Jesus not only gave his life for me, but he gave his life to me. God gave me credit for dying on a cross, being buried, being resurrected. I can prove it in Romans. <laughs> you know how it works. I'm going to give you the Old Testament type. See, because all that stuff in the Old Testament was written for our edification. It shadowed. It was a type of what was to come. Here it is in the Old Testament. Abraham had just returned from the slaughter of the kings. He'd got Lot and all them people back. He'd slaughtered those kings. He's coming back with all the treasure. And he runs into a man by the name of Melchizedek. Now you can believe whatever you want to, but he didn't have a father and a mother and he was without beginning and no end. And he was the prince of Salem. And you can believe what you want to, but I'd write outside in my Bible reincarnate Jesus Christ he ran into Jesus coming back from the slaughter of the kings and you know what Abraham did let me just hit this from my pastoring days Abraham paid tithe of all before there's ever a law about tithing people say well that's under the law Abraham wasn't under the law but when he ran into Jesus, he couldn't help it. He paid tithes of all. When they made the priesthood uh, and Aaron had passed away uh, and somebody had to take his place, they had to choose somebody from Levi, uh, from that tribe, and the, uh, from, from the tribe of Levi, excuse me. When they had to make the priesthood, they was going to take somebody from the tribe of Levi who could take tithes. They picked Levi. And they said, wait a minute now. How's Levi going to take tithes? When he ain't never paid tithe. He never paid tithe. Paul said, might have been a writer of Hebrews. I ain't sure Paul wrote Hebrews. The writer of Hebrews said that he was able to pay tithes because he was credited with paying tithes when Abraham paid tithes because he was in the loins of Abraham. 
Well, I never have added up. Well, I ought to stop and add it up. But I know that Abraham was 75 years old when he paid tithes, and he was 100 years old before Isaac was born. So that's 25 years. And Isaac was 40 years old before he ever got married. And then them two boys is born, and uh, uh, Levi, if I'm not mistaken, is the fourth born son of Jacob. So there's a long time between when Abraham paid tithes and when Levi was old enough to be, had to be at least 30 to be the priest, and he could receive tithe, when he could receive tithe, 30 years old, had, by 150 years had passed. And they said, he's worthy to receive tithe because he paid tithe in Abraham. When Abraham, Levi ain't never paid no tithe, but because Abraham did it. Now, he ain't never died on the cross. I never was whipped and spit upon. I never was buried, physically buried, and resurrected to a new life, physically. But God said I did, because he gave me credit for what? Now, it's been a long time since Jesus died on the cross and was buried and rose again the third day. But today, God gives me credit, not because I did anything, because he called me not according to my works, not according to my will, but he gave me his purpose and grace in Christ Jesus. So I get credit for his righteousness, his holiness. I get his life, not just everlasting life, but eternal life, all because of Christ. You have the world and a thousand more like it. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Because there's no one like him. There's no one like him. So the next time you want to pooch your lip, remember it ain't got nothing to do about you. We already know that you nothing. But you ain't getting credit for you anymore. You getting credit for him. Don't hold your head down. Say hallelujah. I'm glad I can receive tithes because great great grandpa tithes. I'm glad I can be righteous and holy and perfect before God because my Savior is, my half brother is, my Lord is. He supplied me with his purpose and grace. He supplied me with his person. I'm confident. He provided me, supplied me with a particular time. Now he seals the deal right here. Because all of some of you looking at me like, I don't know about all that. But let's look when it happened. It did not happen when you got saved. It did not happen when he called you. He did all of this. Don't get mad at me. I didn't write it. Before the world began, he designed, see, we act like salvation's a plan. It ain't a plan with man. Now, it was a plan of God. He designed it. He could have said, if you make a million dollars and give it to charity, you can go to heaven. But he didn't. He said, I'm going to come down, put on a body of flesh, and I'm going to die. And everybody that believes in me, this is what they're going to get. Because this is my purpose and grace. Uh, I'm going to give it to them in Christ. If you're not in Christ, none of this applies to you. If you're in Christ, all of it applies to you. And I don't know about you, but I ain't walking through this world apologizing and I'm not being ashamed of my Lord I, I'm not shutting up and standing in a corner I'm not a watering it down I, I ain't a going alone to get along I, I ain't a coming under the umbrella of love I, I ain't a going to f- uh, preach it one way here and another way there I'm not after a following I'm not trying to raise up some kind of ministry I'm just excited about what God did for me in Christ before the world ever begun I quit beat yourself up child of God he didn't base it on you anyway he didn't wait till you get a guy here to see how sorry you was uh, he did it before he ever spoke the world them old mountain preachers used to say before he ever hung the mud seals of this old world hallelujah he had already purposed in his own heart uh, that Jesus had come and taste death for every man I'm in on it I'm going to stand up and be counted I'll mash around uh, in the mud pit be made fun of spit on and ridiculed but I owe him at least that hallelujah I love him tonight and I want to be by the grace of God the Christian 
that God saved me and called me to be. I leave you with this and say whatsoever he says to you, you do it. Will you be the Christian? Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed, the pastor is coming. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.